Welcome to Ken's Corner Podcast, Season 3. Get ready for expert analysis and rising wrestling stars. Now here we go with your host, Ken Judge. Hi everyone, this is Ken from Ken's Corner, and tonight's an exciting night. It is Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Playoffs. And both my friend Frankie Abadalano, and I actually think I got it right this time. That Frankie almost, Alphabet, almost, almost got it right. Uh, <laughs> it's the most full I've gotten a little better since the last time you've been on with me. Um, I hope at least I have. Uh, anyway, we're going to start talking about uh, how you ended up coming on the Ken's Corner in the first place and your affiliation with the Florida wrestling scene. Um, I never knew about Brick Entertainment. Uh, um wrestling um are you aware of uh brick no actually i wasn't aware of brick entertainment <clears throat> don't forget i came in a, quite a few years ago i've been out of out of there probably at least a decade or more i would think i worked for the global wrestling alliance and took over i filled in actually i don't want to say took over because nobody can replace the great the one and only gordon Soley. but uh Gordon Soley had that gig, and uh, I auditioned for it after he took ill, and that's when I hooked up with Bob Roop and that crew from the Global Wrestling Alliance. But I had been a fan and into wrestling long before that. I had worked some of the indies uh, here locally in Florida. Yeah, it is a, a wrestling hotbed. Like, I don't know how many wrestlers I have had on Ken's Corner now, Frank, but it, it is, uh, I don't know. Probably at least a hundred by now, I think, in the last couple of years, and and I say half of them have come from your state of Florida. So it's uh, it's really interesting the the talent that you got coming out of that uh, that state down there. Well, I've been uh, I've been following your exploits in the the wrestling world too up there in Canada, our northern neighbor, and uh, you're doing quite well up there. And a lot of those guys in Canada have come down and made big names here in the in the, uh, in the states of wrestling. Uh, the hearts come to mind. I'm sure everybody in Canada is familiar with the hearts. Oh, yeah. Bret Hart, uh, the excellence of execution. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's not the only family. There are a lot of guys come out of Canada. Who yeah, did soccer show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, I, I see you're working with uh, Magnuson now uh, on occasion out there, are you? Yes, I have done a bit of work with Magnum. I followed him out to Jacques Rougeau's uh, Montreal uh, Loot Academy uh, 2023. Uh, 20, 2024 is actually approaching us. Uh, it starts in August, and I'm hoping to get Jacques Rougeau back on here again. But no, I'm actually doing some work right here in my hometown, Frank. Uh, thanks for, for pointing that out. I'm uh, working with... Uh, Gunnar Lang, who is the Iron Cowboy of Stovall, Ontario, and he's actually helping promote uh, a live event. The first one since 1976 here in my area. Uh, I mean, the last time there was wrestling in Stovall, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he wrestled the bear. <laughs> That's how long we've come, Frank. <laughs> well, I hear you got. I, get, I hear you got a big, uh, big thing coming up too here on Ken's Corner Podcast. So aren't you going to do something like? From the middle of the ring, I hear something like that. Yes, yes. So it's uh, uh, it's called Just Getting Started, which is uh, actually live uh, next uh, Saturday, April twenty seventh. At uh, doors open at five thirty, bell ring at six o'clock. I will be doing a promo and entering the ring with uh, Ken's Corner Posse as my security, as always, and also introducing to the town of Stovall and and people that. Uh, want to know i actually work for the local radio station right here in stovall called whistle radio uh dot com or whistle radio 102.9 fm stovall um i love saying it and it's this here ken's corner and interesting guests like you mr frank uh mr alphabet uh, i'm just <laughs> gonna call you that from now on you know uh, you do that's exactly what they called me when i did my little stint in, in the military alphabet that's yeah, fine. I, I remember <laughs> from the last podcast we did and that's that's what you asked me to call you so yeah, uh, it's, it's always resonated in me actually we got a we're going to talk a little bit about hockey afterwards because we have an on-running bet going on. Uh, you're a Tampa Bay fan, and of course, I'm a Maple Leaf fan. But this uh, coming up next week is NSW uh, presents a live pro wrestling just getting started. And it actually features uh, former WWE superstar Leo Rush. So I'm going to be part of that. 
Nice. And Very I, nice. Yeah, thank you. I'm actually the ring uh, reporter as well, so that's going to be lots of fun. I'm going to be doing some interesting interviews, uh, feeling my best like the WWE and uh, loving every second of it, Frank. Uh, keep your head on a swivel if you're, ring, if you're ringside, man. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that, I'll take it from you. That's for sure. Now let's swing over real quick. And let's talk about hockey. And I yes, actually, right. yeah, I gave you a message one day and I said, oh, you're going to play Boston. We're going to play Florida. We're going to do each other a favor. And then we're going to meet in the middle. But somehow Boston decides to lose to Pittsburgh and Ottawa. Conspiracy theory up here in Toronto. But <laughs> they land on our door for the fourth time in the last 11 years. And we're going to be battling the beast. Last year, we beat your team, Tampa Bay. And that's where our... our our and, bet comes from uh, free and you drinks. Know, you <laughs> know, I tell you, I still have issue with that game three, Ken. I yeah. still have issue with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We have a lot of issues with a lot of games in our past, so we understand <laughs> that. Lee fans understand that. But this year, we get to battle the bad Boston Bruins. And guess what? I don't think they're – although – they were second and ran the conference for most of the year. I think they're built around their goaltending of uh, Jeremy Swayman and uh, Linus Allmark. And they don't have a Chara, uh, um, um, a Pe Patrice ba uh, Bergeron, or David Krejci at the top. I mean, their number one center is Charlie Coyle. I'll take that against our 69 goal scorer, Austin Matthews. Oh, yeah, that Austin Matthews is a beast up there for Toronto. We learned that last year when we played them. Yeah, yeah. But, hey, listen, man, you, you know, Kucherov been on a tear for us this year, and Braden Point, uh, both those guys, and, of course, Stamkos, you can't say enough about him. So well, yeah. we'll have our core nucleus of guys still together with a couple of new faces that like to brawl out there. Definitely. I want to swing it around to the Tampa Bay Lightning because – I do want to uh, uh, let you know what I feel of my analysts of your team, if you don't mind. Um, Tampa Bay was a little bit uh, uh, bullet ridden at the start of the year. Mr. Vasilevsky, Andre there, he was, wasn't playing for a while there. But since January 1st, do you know who the two top goalies in wins since January 1st are? No, off the top of my head, no. I'm embarrassed well, to say, Ken. <laughs> that would be your goalie, Mr. Vasilevsky, and that would be our goalie, Mr. Samsonov. So I, I knew he was on a tear. <laughs> yes, he's been. And that's one of the reasons. And let's not slight the fact that uh, you probably are going to have the MVP of the NHL this year. I don't see how we don't give it to Kucherov because without Kucherov, I don't see Tampa Bay in the playoffs. Um, I don't know. Bra Braden points, no slouch. Of course, stamp coast, but neither one of those guys were a coocher up, like you said. He he really has towed the line this year for this team. Definitely, no doubt about that. Breaking in some of the young talent, some of the guys that were traded over to us too. So getting them all settled in the locker room, some of the backstory maybe you guys don't get up there. So you know, more than just on the ice, he's been a big player uh, for this team. Yeah, he's definitely a big player. I I, I could see that from afar. Um, he is uh, your Austin Matthews for sure, and uh, and it, he's ready uh, to. I think I predict uh, Tampa Bay. Although you get Florida, I think you're going to win that battle of Florida. And uh, I I know a lot of analysts are are picking Florida to win the cup, but I I just call that. I don't know. I'm not going to say the word BS. That's yeah, the word I'm go. calling on that. <laughs> I, I do not see Florida beating Tampa Bay. They might uh, come at him with the body, and it's going to be a battle. But I think the offensive players that Tampa Bay has, who are similar to our Leafs, are going to pull your team with that uh, superstar goaltender that you have. That anyone could be could be jealous of a, a six foot seven, two time Stanley Cup winning goalie. I, I just don't see Florida beat them in my eye. Well, Vasi, obviously one of the best in the world for sure. You know, but I'll tell you something about Florida. They scare me. They really worry me because they give us problems. They beat us up in the regular season. They did this year for sure. They're a, bit, they're a physical team, so they like to play physical. Where I see us, we've gotten a little bit more physical this year, but we're more of a finesse goal shooter type team. Uh, you know, speed and finesse and, and, and accuracy with our, with our shots really is the hallmark of what the Lightning do, I think. And uh, 
Florida scares me. If we get, I, I'm hoping that we get our matchup again. You know, I'd like to see Toronto and Tampa Bay go at it. I got to get back at you. It's eating at me since last year. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> we that, that's we got that little gentleman's. We got that little gentleman's bet going between us, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can't, rivalry. Yeah. But if we go double in, 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 and I, when I beat you this time, I'm definitely coming to meet you in St. Catharines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll be up there again this year around Labor Day as I do every year. I love to get up there. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my friends up there, my, my folks up there, the 10 Brooks. So, uh, Bev and John and Lion and, and Angela up there. And then the, the Lilies, Bruce and Jan, they tune in once in a while. And I know they catch that one minute sports report you do on uh, whistle 102.9 up there. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, it, I'm still struggling with that one. I, I take about 30 takes to get it done right. Uh, for my CEO's approval, but I'm getting better by the day. And I thank you so much for mentioning that. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it catches me right there. Thank you. Hey, it, okay, <laughs> hey man, I, I'll tell you, I'm glad we struck up a, a, a good friendship here, Ken, and a friendly rivalry, you know, a friendly rivalry from my friend north of Tampa Bay, way north of Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay, this is the time we're going to give our predictions. Uh, what do you see? Let's start with the Toronto Boston series. How do you see that going down? I, I see that going at least six games. I'm going to give the edge of Toronto. I don't know if that's more analysis or more my heart. I really want that rematch uh, between us, you know, this coming season. But I think it'll go six. You know, I, I'm going to match you with that. I'm going to say six games. And uh, I would love it to be six. That way, we could win it right here in our hometown in front of our hometown fans, which is, wow, it, it, it would be something. So I'm going to, I'm going to say six games as well. Now let's go to the Tampa Bay series that uh, the one that you have uh, in time invested in. I'll tell you, of course, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay, but I really think that this one goes seven. I think Florida is going to push us to the very brink like they do every time we play. Okay. Let's just move around a bit. Uh, how about the Rangers and Washington? And by the way, wasn't that a crazy thing? Uh, Tortorella pulling their goalie and essentially by Washington scoring that goal, they didn't only eliminate Philly, but they eliminated Detroit. They eliminated Sidney <laughs> Crosby and Pittsburgh. <laughs> wow. Eh? There's a lot of teams probably not liking Tortorella too much right now. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, a lot of people are looking at that going, what in the world that just happened? What <laughs> yeah. did this guy do and why? Yeah, you know, exactly. Why? They, 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 they sunk a lot of teams, like you said. <laughs> so how do you see that series going? You know, uh, I, I like the Rangers. I think they're really a tough team. Uh, being a uh, native New Yorker, I guess. I mean, I've lived in Florida since I was 10 years old, but I was born in New York. So oh. I'm going to pull for the Rangers a little bit. You know, I don't really have any preference. Yeah, I know, I know. the Islanders play. I know the Islanders play us tough. Yeah, well, that's the next one. I, I don't see the Rangers having a problem with, with Washington, even with Ovechkin at, at his top. I don't see how uh, the Rangers don't pass through that round. Now, the last one is the Washington, I mean, Carolina and uh, the Islanders. Well, you know, the Islanders, they're fast. The Islanders remind me a lot of us uh, when, when we were starting out uh, the Lightning. They're, they're young, they're quick, they're very fast. They got some good shooters. Their goaltending solid. So, you know, that's, that's going to be an interesting series to watch. Yeah, I I see. Well, you know what? You're so you're calling the Islanders. I think there's got to be an upset. So why not the Islanders, right? I do yeah, love. I love Lou Lamorello since he he was a manager of our team. So I'm I'm kind of pro. And a few of the players there in, on the island did play in Toronto. So I'm gonna. You know what? We're seeing eye to eye here today. Um, well, let's go to the other side of the 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 league. Uh, and let me uh, help me out here. I think Winnipeg is playing Colorado. That's Winnipeg as well as they've played this year. Wow, they end up with Colorado? Well, I'll tell you, I really don't pay too much attention to the West, being as though we're East, and my family's a big Toronto fans, and, yeah. and I got the lighting. So we're in hockey. We're, we're in that rivalry all year. We're keeping track of the East and what's <laughs> going on in our conferences. I don't really follow the West, honestly, too closely. I know Colorado usually has a, a, a solid team. They're generally in it. But, well, uh, the West, I think Winnipeg, 
Yeah. Do you think that is is it Winnipeg that you think that? Well, let's just go through and uh, pick who might come out of the West Conference. That might be a little easier for both of us. Now, who do you think uh, will come out of that conference? I, I think Winnipeg is a, is a decent. I think they're better than what their record shows. Yeah, you know what? There's a handful of pretty good teams there. There's Winnipeg. There is Edmonton. Uh, there is Colorado. Winnip. I mean uh, Vancouver. I don't see Vancouver going that far, although they had a good season. But uh, that all depends on their their goaltending of Thatcher Demko, really. But um, we're not even going to say who we uh, predicting for Stanley Cup because neither of us are going to go against our own teams. So we already know what we're going to say. There. Yeah, we already know <laughs> what we're going to say. You know that that that's we're going to back our teams to help, but that's us. That's what fans. That's hockey fans. That's where it's supposed to be, man. Exactly. You know, but I, I like I like that we can have a friendly rivalry. You're going to pull for your team. I'm going to pull for mine. And we're going to shake hands after it's all over in the spirit of the game. Exactly. So I do want to see you come up uh, when you come up to St. Catharines because I I need to get as a pitcher so we can uh, put on my on my wall behind me here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, you, anyway, wear your Leafs, you wear your Leafs jersey. I wear my Lightning jersey. Yes, that that's a deal. Now I'm just going to leave the floor open to you, Frank. What would you like to say before we sign off today? Well, just before we end this, let's let's go totally off kilter here, Ken. I'd like to get your thoughts, if any, on this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fiasco scheduled for July. Oh, wow, um, Jake Paul and his his brother Logan. Although I've never been a big supporter of either of them, they seem to amaze me. They keep doing things that I just don't expect them to do like Logan Paul coming into the WWE and actually looking like he fits there. It, it, it kind of boggles my mind, but he is very athletic. And I think Jake's also uh, that way as well. But I, I, how do you go against Mike Tyson? How? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a 58 year old Mike Tyson. And let's not forget what happened to, to uh, Vanda Holyfield when he come back at, at 58. I think that fight was like uh, a minute a minute, 30 seconds, something like that to come out. But you're right. Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. If the training videos he's posting can be believed, uh, you know, more than 10 or 15 seconds, if he's keeping that up for more than 15 second clips. Uh, yeah. He might be teaching the youngster a lesson, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be very exciting. And it's, uh, they, they seem to be bringing out some good, uh, Good uh, product, at least, and um, you got to hand it to these uh, Paul uh, brothers. They've done done quite well for themselves as social media influencers and as athletes. Yeah, how about that, man? Social media influencers these days. How about back in our day? We didn't have that, did we, Ken? No, we did not. I think I think that's what we are in a smaller. Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> at least at least we can hope to be. <laughs> maybe in a smaller realm. Yeah, you're right. But you're doing real well with this Ken's Corner podcast. I enjoy watching it, checking in. Uh, shout out to our, our other friend uh, Colonel Brute, who uh, I see you uh, likes to uh, plug your show quite quite a lot too. Yeah, Colonel Brute's uh, an amazing uh, man. As much as he. Uh, Loves to be play the bad guy, and he is a manager of champions. He's the uh, manager of champions. I was and, with him at a Legends lunch just about a month or so ago. Oh, that's amazing! And yeah. I I do love uh, some of the guys in his stable. Uh, the Tank is a great guy. I don't know what's really going on with the American Giant. I know they had a bit of a a war on my podcast, but. Um, I do think that's going to get resolved at some point and someone's going to get beat up. I'm just not sure which side is going to do what, because I love both of them. So, <laughs> All right, Ken, well, listen, man, let me sign off by saying it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for having me on the show. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be, I'll be looking and be, I'll be watching and we'll be speaking. Uh, hopefully like our teams get to the second round and we'll face off again, my friend. Yes, that's right. My name is Ken, and I'm here on Ken's Corner with Frank Abadanalano. Abandandolo. <laughs> Abandandano. <laughs> Did I say it right? Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a good day. Thank you, you so much. Again. By the time you come back for the third podcast, Frank, I will uh, perfect your name. Uh, my <laughs> co-host on the radio station, Joe Moyer, he'll call BS on that one, but <laughs> I'll keep trying anyway. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.